Welcome to the Movement MFG Podcast. I am Mike Barisnock, your host. I am here with Elizabeth Prairie. She's back after being off a couple episodes. So you're going into your first production run of your first products. What do you do from there? Let's go. All right, we're jumping right into this. Elizabeth, thank you for being here. Of course, you're I love back. Being here. You're yeah. back. We had a couple episodes <laughs> off without you, and we missed all your insight. That's for sure. Oh, thanks. Yeah, so, it's been a little crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. So, how's everything been going? Busy with biz. It's good. It's uh, it's uh, we're kicking off the new year with uh, a lot of work. So it's good. Yeah, awesome. a lot of different clients and stuff. <laughs> yes. A lot of different clients. Managing clients. Uh, with a lot of different needs, yes. A lot of different <laughs> needs, yes. I know like every, I feel like every business kind of runs into that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, all right, so today what we're talking about, and this has come up a lot lately um, with a lot of our clients that we have been working with. And basically, they're, we've done all the development work. Um, their products are ready to go. They're finalized. They have their samples. They've even done their photo shoots. They're ready to go. We're ready to rock. But now we have to do our first size run. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is what sizes do you go with? Mm -hmm. How many, what quantity should you do? Mm -hmm. And a lot, and and it's just been a lot of, um, a lot of times people have just been asking for some guidance because we've been through it with our GTS clothing line. Mm -hmm. And so we're happy, you know, and what we do at movement is just, you know, it's not just about a sale or, or production. It's, it's literally a partnership and guidance and feedback of whatever we can do to make your line successful and, uh, and get it off the ground. So this, this topic has come up a lot today and I know you're busy. We've been busy with stuff. So we wanted to do a quick, quick episode. Um, and so the biggest thing I would say um, with, uh, with quantities is one, do you already have volume coming in? You know, cause a lot of, a, so, yeah, cause some people have existing lines where they kind of know their volume. They know how quickly they can turn 20, 50, mm-hmm. 100 units or so. They know how, how quickly they can do that. The other thing is it never hurts to start small because mm-hmm. what's the, is there, Liz, I guess it's just, is there an advantage to selling out? To selling out of um, stock. Of, I think, of course, right? It creates that demand of the product. And there's a, a much more urgency when you're posting about new products to be put out. Yeah. Um, so you're you're really just creating that internally. And I think it's, I think it's, there's a huge benefit to that on the marketing side. Yeah. Yeah. And I know I, like, I've seen like a lot of, a lot, definitely a lot of um, niche brands mm-hmm. down in New York, especially that, mm-hmm. you know, their whole marketing is based on selling out. Yep. Because then it just creates a buzz. It creates urgency. Yeah. Um, and again, like it doesn't necessarily have to be your, you know, your whole strategy, mm-hmm. but it does. And again, being a first size run selling out, I feel like that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's definitely a good thing. Yeah, there is. I mean, also with that, there's a way of spinning that and playing with it um, from the marketing side of it, you know, just selling out and then having the item unavailable is one thing on the website. But yeah. if you truly... Um, especially do like email marketing and social marketing yep. saying we're about to sell out, we're about to sell out, and then really like teasing it and playing with it. Yeah. Um, there could be a huge benefit. Yeah. To that. It is kind of that, like spinning that story. Yeah, it's spinning the story. It's not just being sold out online. It's That's also, so true. Yeah. That's so true. That's so true. And then, yeah. So, I mean, and then the other aspect of it, you know, and that's kind of like looking at your quantities and what you want to do, but, you know, kind of looking at individual sizes, Mm -hmm. you know, like what sizes should I go with? What is my customer, you know, going to want? So like, I don't know what, what do you, what do you think it is as far as like being aware of what your customer is looking for? Yeah. I mean, I think it's even good just to take like a sample population and really to even, um, at least on the social media side, you can see who's following you, who's making purchases. If you're using Shopify, you can go through and see a little bit of demographic information. You can yeah. look up those names and try to find out and just kind of even do like a sample. Um, you know, you could even send them direct emails and or you could do Instagram polls. There's a lot of polling techniques on Facebook and Instagram right now. Yeah. Um, and you can ask them, right? You can say, hey, you know, we're about to order this. And uh, and what do you think? You yeah. Know, should this be maybe a little oversized or do you think this is right, mm-hmm. right fit? Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, especially know, now ask. with Insta- Instagram, you can do the yes, you know, the, yeah, it's so the nice. yes, no and stuff like and that. And you can do that stories. on Facebook as well. I mean, even Twitter. I yeah. mean, you could do, there's a, so many polling techniques. Um, yeah, and again, yeah. and to get that customer insight. Yeah, and actually, 
actually another interesting concept that um, one of our one of our clients has done is that they've almost they because you know you can you know they have their they have their sample mm -hmm. and then you could you know if you really wanted to you know we also have a process where you can sit there and do additional samples if you mm -hmm. want and what you can do is you almost take those samples, you can photograph them, you can you can almost like set up almost like a little pre-order. Mm -hmm. You know, and we've had a client do that where they have their pre-order, say, you know, again, like say say it is a smaller um, type startup brand. You know, you could sit there, collect 15, 20, yeah, 20 units cool. of whatever, you know, of, of the sizing breakdown, say it's mm -hmm. five, five and five, you know, small, medium, large mm -hmm. or something like that. You tack that on to your initial order, you know, and I think that that's just such an interesting concept and creative way to kind of get things yeah you know, kind of like and then to start looking at trends and and whatnot with those sizing and all of that that's awesome yeah no, i know and i've and and in general terms i kind of direct or guide people to do a one two two one so you know size run oh, yeah. you know like like a like you know again in that proportion mm -hmm. you know so like you know obviously one extra small two small two medium one large and even if you want to do a one xl but again you have to know you have to know i always tell them though like you're going to know your market best but if i have to say what might be the safest one that you know you'll sell through i kind of you know i kind of suggest that to start mm -hmm. and then you could always fill in the other sizes that you need and yep. stuff like that um and then going i guess when you're doing you know you're when, when you're running you know about to run uh you know production for your products usually you know it's a collection you know and you have your staple products and then you'll also have kind of like your season leaders you know like i know for us like to use an example for our gts clothing line it's an athletic it's an athletic company we sell yoga pants you know like and that's pretty much um most of our business Going into a season, no matter what season it is, no matter what time it is, your black yoga pants are always going to be the staple. But meanwhile, every season we put out different, could be grays, could be brighter mm -hmm. colors. And those are kind of like our season leaders, but we always have our staples. And so when you're going into your production run, you kind of have to be able to, you know, know what ones are going to be your staples or kind of see what ones are, yeah. what ones will be, yep. you know, develop into your staples and stuff like that. So, I mean, I, get, I mean, Liz, I know you have a lot of experience working with different people. I know that you were saying you know, L.L. Bean does, you know, kind of seasonal stuff and staple stuff so well. Yeah, I think that they, I think they've really perfected at this point um, where my relationship has come in with them is being an influencer for the brand or kind of an ambassador, whatever you want to label that as. Um, they've actually, and because we're so close to New York City, uh, they've taken me down there and they do these the, these events maybe four times a year quarterly or um, whether it's spring, summer line, whatever's coming out. Um, and they meet with, they bring in magazine editors, they bring in bloggers, they bring in influencers they bring in all these different people and they get their feedback of those new products mm. and they kind of show those new products on new color yeah. lines um but at the same time there's always those like products that are never gonna go out of style yeah yeah and i feel like yeah. mean there's so many of those there yeah they do such a good and then and and obviously that's a you know on big scale Mm -hmm. you know um the type of an event you're talking about things like that but mm -hmm. again we were just talking about how you could do something like that there's there's availability and opportunity for for brands God, and businesses to do that now online you know yeah. so it's very similar to what yeah. you just said but mm -hmm. you know for online yep yeah you can absolutely just tap into those people that are typically say the brand has key influencers or ambassadors you can easily tap into those people and just ask yeah. um whether there's a facebook group out there for them or just getting their email and sending them an email. If they place an order, you have their contact information. Yeah. Reach out. They would love, I'm sure they would love to provide some feedback and they're seeing the brand as an outsider. So it might bring really yeah. critical insights. Yeah, totally, totally. All right, yeah, my last point because I know we got to we gotta wrap up Friday afternoon. Liz never stops. She's just going to keep working right after we do this. Uh, yeah, and as always, we're coming from the MFG headquarters. So I got to go check out, make sure we're all, we're all running smoothly out there. But yeah, I mean, the last thing I was going to say is, you know, I think making, you know, going into your first production run, um, you know, making mistakes small is always is always a good thing. And I think that our production process, you know, where minimums, um, you know, we're able to, in most cases, give clients uh, a 12 unit minimum, which just it just allows them to make mistakes mm -hmm. small because they're going to want to test. They're going to want to test those waters. And 12 units is, is a hell of a lot better to test it than, oh than 300 units, yeah. especially, you know, especially starting up. Mm -hmm. 
You agree with that? Absolutely. I think it's a really <laughs> unique opportunity you guys are offering people in, and, and that's why people are really drawn to this move manufacturing. Yeah, yeah. All right. We're going to wrap up. I know that was a quick episode, but I just wanted, um, you know, I wanted to talk about that because it, it came up multiple times this week, and I just think that'd be really helpful for everybody. Liz, thank you. Always giving thank insights. You. Thank you for that LL Bean insights. <laughs> Obviously, you know, they do a lot of things well. Um, all right. Tune in next time.